In this section, we're going to be discussing date field types. But before moving on to the date field types, we just want to finish our discussion of the enum type, which we mentioned supports up to 65,535 elements, which reflects a 16-bit storage range. And as a result, anything that's entered into an enum type column must either be blank, which can be substituted in for null, which usually takes the first value that's in the list, or one of the values in the list. So for example, we mentioned that many of the grants columns, as well as privilege columns, use enum as a type, forcing certain values. We could use this value on our table structures as well. Let's show tables. This is the MySQL database, so we'll use contact and then rerun that show tables. And we have our character one table here that we could work with. Let's describe character one to see where we can make room for this particular enum type field. And as you can see, it contains one field name, which is currently a long text field. Let's alter table. And that's the character one table. We want to add a column. So let's add, in this case, we want to add an enum type column. Prior, we modified to get our particular name column to become long text instead of varkar. But in this instance, we'd like to add a column and make it enum. So we need to decide what we want to store. So let's add a column. We may call it, for example, present, meaning the person's present or not, or local, yes or no. Let's go with local. Local user. And its type is going to be set to enum, followed by open and close parentheses. And in between the open and close parentheses, we're free to list up to 65,535 values. Each of these elements, which are really like elements in an array, are stored internally as a list within MySQL and are, and are referenced using the array element number, indexed at zero, of course, and subsequent values being one, two, three, and so forth. So if we wanted to force values of yes or no, such as y or n, and by no means are we forced to using a single character in any of these strings, we can use the full word yes and the full word no. This would add a column called local underscore user, which is our way of determining whether or not the person who's represented by name is local or not. And it is an enum type column, which means we must specify yes or no or be forced to a null, null or blank value. Let's describe character one again to take a look at it and notice that we have two options, yes or no. And if we insert data into this particular table using insert into character one setting name to be equivalent to let's say Dean Davis for example, comma local underscore user, local meaning local in the United States is equivalent to yes, this will be accepted by the DBMS. But we'll show you a follow-up where the value is invalid. Let's follow this up with select star from character one. And you'll see that the new value has been inserted into the table, Dean Davis, with the enum value labeled as yes. Now how about inserting a value that's invalid? Let's try inserting again, but this time we'll change the name, although there is no constraint or uniqueness requirement. Well, let's just go ahead and include a new name and we'll set the value to an in invalid value of just simply Y. And you'll see that for the next user, a new recently inserted user, the enum column is blank because it didn't meet one of the values. Now we could have defined the enum column as being not null, forcing us to specify a correct value from the enum list. That's certainly optional and something you may want to keep in mind. So enum allows us to force specific values and it allows us to define a list and by executing a describe on the name of the column you'll see the list of or the name of the table that is you'll see for the column the list of values that work for that particular column 
that you'll need to use when inserting values. Nulls are permitted, which is why we're able to insert a blank value, but if we force not null, then we would not be able to insert any record into the table that didn't meet one of the enum values. So now we want to move on to discussing date values that are stored. Date values are commonly stored in databases to relate the record information to a point in time and as a result we may reference that point in time in making decisions. MySQL supports many date and time type fields. So let's label this section date and time types. The most basic date type that's supported is called the date field. So the date type, or just simply date, accepts a four or two digit leading year. So it'll accept YY-MM-DD or four Y's MMDD. MySQL's default date syntax expects date in this format, whether using four, four placeholders or four digits for the year, or four digits or placeholders, or two digits or placeholders for the year. So whether using two or four digits, MySQL's default date format is what you see here. Year, month, day. So you need to keep that in mind whenever inserting date-related information. Of course, you should prefer to or elect or opt to use four-digit years to be more descriptive and to avoid any confusions as to which century is being indicated when inserting values. So use four-digit dates wherever possible. It helps out greatly. But there are certainly rules concerning the ranges that are supported when using two or four-digit dates, especially in the year column or the year portion of the date. When using a date type, this is a type, one of the date types or one of the date time types is called date. When using the date type, there are some constraints. For example, the range that's permitted for the year portion of the date includes the year 1000 and a month of 01 for January and 01 for the day through 9999. 1231. This is the legitimate range of date values that may be inserted into a column which wears the date type. Keep that in mind. Now, let's say, for example, we were to insert a date value into one of our tables as currently defined, and it's an invalid value. Let's see what happens. So we'll return to the shell. We'll need to alter the table, of course. Let's alter the table, finding the alter table command for character 1 and we'll add a column called basic date and set its type to simply be date. This will expect the proper date format. When finished, we'll describe character 1 and you'll see it now contains a field called basic underscore date which is of type date and it will accept nulls. We didn't set any constraints on it. Let's attempt to insert a value into it using the insert command and we want to set only the last value we're not interested in the other value so let's just simply set basic underscore date to a permitted format permitted formats include the following two digit or four digit dates and we can use any delimiter that we want such as a quote or a single quote or double or a semicolon or a colon or an at symbol between the values and MySQL will parse it accordingly. You typically will enter dates using a standard delimiter such as dash but you could also use forward slashes if you're more comfortable and it would certainly work. So basic underscore date we'll set it to today's date 2006 dash month being 02 dash 13 for today's day and we want this to be inserted into the basic underscore date column and then we'll select star when complete let's take a look at that and that the set basic date is missing a terminating semicolon before the next statement the select statement and there you have it so we have 
2006 or 213 stored, everything else being null. Uh, this is a bit overwhelming. We could alter the table. Let's take a look at the table structure again. We'll describe character 1. We'll execute an alter table against character 1. And we'll modify the name field, resetting it to a var car. So let's modify it and set it to var car. And we need to s select a upper limit. Let's go with something such as 255, which requires one byte for storage. Let's take a look at it after running the command again. Now it's varcar, and we'll select star from character one, which will give us fewer values, only 255. It's much more tractable. In fact, we could delete everything from this particular table and insert all new values by executing a delete command if that was the, something we were interested in. But it's not of any interest, so let's continue. So the one format that's, that's supported includes the four-digit or two-digit date. Let's insert a value using or a record using a two-digit date value to show you how it's interpreted. We'll go with 06, 02, 13, but this is definitely not a supported way of doing things. Notice MySQL still interprets the year portion to be the current century for 2006 rather than for 1906. So when using date, we have valid values of 1000 through 9999, but when you specify a leading two digit value for the year, if it's 06 or if it's any of the years that are close to the current year, it's interpreted as the year that's related to our current century rather than the 19th or the 20th century for the 19th hundreds. So date is one value or one type that we can apply, one value to a column. There's another date formatted type and that's called date time. Date time stores, in addition to date related information in two digit or four digit form, time related information. So let's list this particular type as date time. And it has similar rules. The values should be from the year 1000 through 9999, but the times include the following. This Shortly after or immediately after defining the date, you define the time, which accepts the syntax such as the following from midnight and it's represented by hours hours minutes minutes second second through 2359 at the end of 9999 so the format that's expected for the time includes HH MM SS which should come as no surprise and for date expect what we've previously defined two or four digit so we'll include this in brackets and we can specify two or four digit leading years followed by hour, hour, minute, minute, second, second to insert those values. So let's go ahead and define a column as being a date time column. We'll need to use the alter statement to do that to add a new column. So instead of modifying, let's add a new column. And we'll call this particular column, let's just make it something logical com compared to the recently used column. So instead of basic date, let's make it basic date time. So basic underscore date time will be a date time column, followed by a describe character one, just to ensure that our changes have been committed. And let's just ensure that we have the right syntax here. There it is. Basic underscore date time is now daytime which means we can insert time related information and be sure that MySQL preserves it so let's insert it we'll insert and in fact we could select current to reveal the current time to help us or assist us in inserting this information let's go ahead and insert into character one set and we'll set name equivalent to Dean Davis and basic underscore date equivalent to 2006 02013 that is 
followed by basic underscore date time equivalent to date plus time information which includes 2006 0213 and the time that we just copied into memory let's paste it and we still have the format in memory so let's copy it again and control shift V to paste it and when complete or when the syntax is completely uploaded we'll then execute a select star from character one our character based table where we began our strings studies and now we have information in both columns as well as the first column so all three columns are populated or three columns out of the four are populated here is the time information preserved now what if we were attempt to insert time related information into the basic date column let's try it we'll paste the same value and that's 1535 and 11 seconds and see whether or not the database accepts it notice it's truncated so we'll try it again now we have three records but the basic date column truncates anything that's non date or does not match a date whereas date time will accept the date part as well as the time part how about if we were to insert into the date time column just the date with no time let's see what mysql does let's try that notice mysql fills in what is called a dummy date so let's list that if no time information is specified mysql inserts a dummy date this is actually a term used by mysql to describe a dummy time that is if no time is inserted to describe the following time hours minutes seconds of all zeros so if we omit this information then it becomes all zeros now what about for the date column had we not specified a value let's try that out here let's say we didn't specify the date time or the date column not date time so let's reset this to 2006 02 or 13 and then avoid putting any information into basic underscore date to see what happens you'll see momentarily that the value for date gets filled and notice let's just double check that basic underscore date isn't being specified but it gets filled by default by MySQL so as a result it works out nicely let's try that again let's rerun that insert command we want to insert into and it's a bit messy here so let's try it again we'll insert into character one and we'll set basic underscore date time to be equivalent to something that reflects about now let's move on with 0213 and set it to be about 14 o'clock or 2 p.m. and terminate this with a semicolon followed by a select star from character one and as you can see the other values are now null because we didn't specify a value whereas the date time field has been filled in appropriately so ideally if you specify no value then MySQL will simply include null in that particular column we'll continue discussing date time related information next so as you can see when you don't specify a value for a basic date column MySQL does nothing about it in the recent examples here there was a value being, being inserted which is why each of these rows have values at those positions but generally speaking if you don't specify an entry for one of the columns with the exception of a timestamp column which we've yet to look at MySQL will not fill the column you could set a default however but only on the timestamp column at least as of the current version which is the latest stable available so date will not accept time information and if you specify only a date for a date time field it fills in what's called a dummy time how about the reverse what if we were to insert into basic date time 
time information but no date information. So let's go ahead and specify 1401 with no date. Notice what happens. MySQL interprets the 14 to be 2014 and fills in yet again a dummy time. So you need to be careful how you specify your syntax because in one case we use dashes as the delimiters for the date and in the other we use colons for the delimiters for the time. But it drives home the point that we illustrated which is MySQL is flexible in the delimiters that you may use to specify date and time information. In other words, as long as you specify a consistent delimiter for one of the parts, either date or time, MySQL will process it. So really argument one becomes date, argument two becomes time. That's how you want to look at it. So we could specify for a date time column all zeros for a date. Let's go ahead and just specify for year, month, and day all zeros leading and time information of 1401. All zeros gets interpreted as 2000 when using date time. That's another thing you need to know. So if you specify all zeros it thinks that it's the year 2000. So, let's list what those rules are when specifying values for date. So date rules include the following. If you specify the values 70 through 69 for two digit dates, they're interpreted as 1970 through 2069. This is when specifying two digit dates. However, date rules when specifying four digit dates are as follows. 1901 through 2155 are interpreted as such or explicitly as well as the year all zeros. So when using four digit dates, whatever you specify between the years 1901 and 2155 are treated literally. Whereas when using two digit dates, 70 through 69 are interpreted to mean 1970 through 2069, which really indicates the Unix epic of 1970. But again, the two digit leading dates is still considered in heavy use out there. And as a result, we need to account for the fact that most of this computing began roughly around then in the late 1960s early 1970s. So that's date time. There's yet another type of date field that we are free to use and may be beneficial depending on your storage requirements and your level of precision and tolerance and the like. And it's called timestamp. Timestamp is similar to date time in that it stores date and time part information. So it stores both pieces of information. But the years are represented slightly differently. With timestamp, the years that you can indicate are between 1970, and this is the Unix epic, 0101, through, and that includes, of course, midnight, which is specified as the following time, hours, hours, minute, minute, second, second, through partway or through a portion of 2037. So when using the timestamp field, be careful. For those of you who will be pr still pretty young around the year 2037, and if you are using MySQL, if it's still around then, then you may need to know or consider having to upgrade any table structures that contain timestamp information. But since that's a still a good ways off, just know that when using timestamps, your range includes 1970 through a portion of 2037. But there's one unique feature of timestamp columns, and that is if you don't specify a value for timestamp columns, MySQL auto populates the current timestamp for you. So let's show you an example of that. So we'll just include a note which says MySQL auto populates the current timestamp for last update of column. This may be very important for certain table structures, perhaps related to finances or healthcare or any other critical environment where you need to know when a given table was altered or touched or updated, then the timestamp column would 
provide that functionality, at least in the current iteration of MySQL. So let's create a timestamp column in our database. We'll describe it, of course, as usual. So we'll describe contacts. Oops, not the contacts, but let's show tables and describe character one. That's the one we're working with to make space for this new column. And we have basic date, basic date time. Let's create one called basic timestamp. So we'll alter table character one and we'll add a new column called basic underscore timestamp and we'll define it as a timestamp column. Now that the change has been made to all 17 rows, let's describe character one and you'll see that there's a timestamp column labeled basic underscore timestamp and type timestamp. It accepts nulls, but whenever it accepts nulls, this means that the DBMS will simply insert a null which gets translated to the current timestamp. In other words, if the user, whether via an application, PHP, Java, ASP, you name it, or directly through the utility or through some GUI based management utility for MySQL inserts a value but omits the timestamp information, MySQL will include the current timestamp on the server. Not on the client, but on the server. So let's show you how that works. Let's select star from character one to see what, if any, changes were made by virtue of adding this new column. Notice that for the existing columns, dummy timestamps and dates were inserted of all zeros in four-digit year format for every one of the columns. So now if any if we go ahead and update any of these columns, MySQL will update the or if we update any of the rows, MySQL will go ahead and update this particular column, the timestamp column, to reflect the current timestamp. So we don't even need to run an insert query, we could run an update query against one of the records, but since there's so many records and this data is a mess anyway, let's just insert an entirely new record. So let's insert into character one setting basic underscore date or let's just set name and leave it up to the DB to fill it in for us. So let's set name equivalent to Amber and we'll then select star from character one. Notice the most recently entered value includes a value for the first field name nulls for pretty much everything else with the exception of the last column, the timestamp column, reflects the current timestamp. We could have placed a different value within the allowable range of 1970 through 2037 into the timestamp column. Let's go ahead and show you how that's done. We'll insert a new value. We'll place one for Diana and in addition to the name column, let's populate basic underscore timestamp by setting a properly formatted value of 2006. And by the way, we did mention you could use any delimiter. So let's go with forward slash, which is native for most folks. So 2006 forward slash 02 forward slash 13 followed by the current time, we'll go ahead and set a time of 15.55 and let's say 30 seconds. Notice it's been inserted, MySQL parsed it properly and instead of inserting a timestamp that's accurate for the local system, and by the way if we select current or select now that will also return the same information. So let's select now, notice that select now returns 15.51 but we inserted explicitly a value of 1555 which for this system has yet to come. So we can insert providing that we properly format the date and or time parts a value of our choice or rely upon the DBMS to submit a value that reflects the current timestamp. Now with timestamp columns you're also free to submit dummy times or dummy dates. So we could, for example, omit the date. Let's omit the date, or omit the time, that is. Let's omit the time and take a look at what's inserted. It's a dummy time. How about omitting the date? Let's include the time this time as whatever the current time is going to be. 
roughly, so we'll set it ahead by going with a time of perhaps 16.04 and 0 seconds. But then we'll place a dummy date of all zeros and see how it's interpreted by the DB. Just to give you a sense for what happens when you enter invalid dates. Notice all zeros were taken and all zeros for time, indicating to us that the DBMS didn't accept our date. The date was an invalid date, the all zeros date, because for timestamp, the legitimate range is from 1970. And also notice that the, up, the insert, that is not the update, threw a warning. We didn't see it because we ran immediately after the insert statement using a, se a semicolon as a separator, a select statement, to return all of the results from the character one table. But if we were to execute a show warnings, you'll see that the warnings, if still available, and it's no longer available, usually it's right after you perform the insert. Let's do that insert again, but not follow up with a select statement, and then execute a show warnings again. And there's the warning. The data was truncated because the time was invalid, well, the date part, that is, that was invalid for the timestamp column. So you must play by the rules unless you adjust the mode in which your MySQL server operates. You can change it from strict mode to a looser mode, but that generally isn't recommended unless you have specific data storage requirements, such as importing data with malformed times. But what you should do to avoid garbage in, garbage out is to clean up that data stream before including it into your new data stream. So by looking at the date and time formats, we've covered thus far the key date and time formats that are permitted in MySQL, including date time, which accepts a full date and time part, and we can specify, as we know, two or four digits. And when using date time, similar to date, we are allowed to specify a date range of the year, or between the years 1000 and 9999, with appropriate timestamp information. And we may also define a timestamp column, but it accepts dates of only 1970 through 2037, which means if you need to support a wider date range, you should consider using the date time field. So really, you're only going to want to use the timestamp field in the event that you want to take advantage of the, what's currently the neat feature of MySQL stamping the row for us in the event that the row changes. And this update applies whenever you run an update, an insert, or make any modifications to any of the columns in a given row. So for example, we could take a record any record, our most recently entered record, update it and then watch the value change. Or we could update all records, so let's run an update statement with update, in this case it's character 1, and we want to set a given column, let's pick a column, let's set name for example, because there are no constraints, so we'll set name equivalent to latte and let the update statement or query execute and as you can see no warnings were thrown there were a total of 22 rows matched and 22 were changed and let's before selecting all of the results or all of the records in the character one table execute a select now which will re return to us the current date and time information 1555 and now let's execute a select star from character 1 and you'll see that 1 the outputs much much cleaner 2 the simple update statement caused MySQL to tag the basic underscore timestamp column for each record to be identical 15 55 and 24 sec seconds indicating that when you do have a column and it's the first column that it applies to in a table structure that is tagged as timestamp, it will default to the current timestamp unless you specify otherwise. Now, what if we had multiple timestamp columns? So let's go ahead and make a note which says note timestamp columns, or we should say it this way MySQL updates using using the current timestamp 
the first timestamp column. This means that if you have multiple timestamp columns, only the first will be updated. So let's go ahead and define a new column using the alter statement. So we'll alter. And of course, it's a table. It's called character one. And what we wish to do is to add a new column. Let's call it basic for simplicity timestamp two. And it will be of type timestamp. We should use or specify the keywords in uppercase for clarity and for readability. And then when finished, we'll describe character one. So now we have a new timestamp type field called basic underscore timestamp two. And its default is the dummy time of all zeros rather than the current timestamp, which tells us that exactly what we mentioned is true. Only the first timestamp column will be updated unless we specify a timestamp explicitly. So let's go ahead and run that update statement again to see whether or not this hashes out. So as it stands, if we execute a select star from character one, you'll see that basic timestamp two reflects the dummy time for all records. Basic timestamp was updated recently to reflect the, the then current timestamp. And if we were to rerun the update statement, setting, let's say, first name this time to something else, let's change the name to Latte Do, followed by a select star from character one you'll see that as mentioned only basic timestamp the very first or the first defined timestamp column gets updated to the current timestamp as evidenced by executing a select now 15 58 56 seconds when we ran the query 13 seconds ago it updated but the second timestamp column retained the dummy time so if we wanted to produce a legitimate time in the, the basic underscore timestamp two column, we'd have to specify it explicitly, which we certainly could. So, and we could do it globally as well using the same update statement. So we'd use update setting name to whatever value and basic underscore timestamp two to some other value that's legitimate. And again, we can vary the delimiters that are used as long as we preserve the format which includes two or four digit year preferably four, four digit year so pretend you didn't hear two digit year because it's not a good practice followed by a space followed by the time format which is in the format of HHMMSS so let's go ahead and set the basic underscore timestamp two column to be one year prior 2005 at let's say a time of 6 p.m. or 1800 hours and 30 seconds and take a look at the results notice the update statement updated first the first name or the name column that is for each record all other columns or the subsequent three columns were ignored the basic underscore timestamp column was updated uniformly for every record all 22 rows all 22 records and basic underscore timestamp two was updated uniformly for all 22 records as well to the value that we specified using the delimiter that we specified. Let's go ahead and change this delimiter. Let's go back to a year such as 2004, but this time use forward slash as the delimiter. And you'll see ditto for the changes. My SQL is able to parse the delimiters without any trouble whatsoever. What if we were to use consistent delimiters across the board for both date and time parts using double quotes or colon for example instead of forward slash or any other delimiter. Notice my SQL is smart enough to still parse it because the format's specific. It's YYYY MM M followed by DD space and then HHMMSS. So it's very, very easy to work with. Now there's another format that's supported. The list seems to be endless. MySQL also supports date and time information without, we should capitalize this, without delimiters. What this means is as follows. We could specify a date and time or date and time parts using the following syntax leading wise or four leading wise followed by two m's 
two D's, two H's, two S's. This would cover, or and we're missing the minutes here, this would cover the full range without delimiters. So we could go ahead and specify something such as the following. 2006, 02, 13, and let's go at a time of 1800 hours, perhaps 1800 hours and 15 minutes and 45 seconds as our new stamp. So let's update. We'll change what you see here to reflect the new format and see whether or not the DB likes it and it still parses it, no big deal. Let's change it to a year from, let's say, three years ago or to a, a stamp from three years ago and it still accepts the format. This also works for leading two-digit years as well as four-digit years, but we really don't want to spend time on two-digit years because it's certainly not a good idea. But just know that with or without delimiters, you can update time-related information for any of the supported date and time field types. So again, to recap, we briefly looked at enum, which allows us to specify values that are permitted, otherwise the null value is inserted. But then we moved on immediately to date and time, which includes the date field, which supports values from the year 1000 through 9999. But then if you need more precision, such as what time during a given day you want to go at date time, date time allows the same range of 1000 through 9999, but also allows the time. And when you do use date time, you can feel free to mix up the formats as we've done with the other date format which is the timestamp format. The only uniqueness behind the time, or two things are unique about the timestamp field time, and, and they include the following. The range that's supported is from 1970 through 2037. And with timestamp controlled fields, if a default value isn't specified, the default becomes the current time. So if a value isn't submitted, then the DBMS inserts the current timestamp information. and it serves as a neat way of telling when the row was last updated not even the entire table but when the actual row was last updated so you may want to run queries against your tables to determine when rows were last updated and this works well in environments that are pretty busy application based environments such as web applications and so forth because changes occur all the time so you could run queries throughout your databases based on timestamp fields, even if you use it just for that purpose alone, but still maintain date related information in separate fields. So the suggested field type for dates is the date time field type. But if you just want a quick way of tagging a row, the timestamp field type is the way to go. So that's a little bit about date and time related fields as well as strings, as well as numeric types. Now we can move on to using some more of the data definition language statements such as create table, create database, and so forth. But by now you should be familiar with many of the DML and DDL languages and have a sense for the data types that are supported by MySQL.